Hi guys, I thought I would do a slightly different video today. I'm going to be sharing with you my favorite art books that I own. And this is a combination of independent artists, one sort of how-to art book, and two that are, well, one's from a show and one's from a video game. But my favorites are the independent artists, but I wanted to share all of them with you in case you're looking to expand your art book collection. Also, honorable mention to a couple I don't have with me, and those are my Ghibli art books. So I think I've Spirited Away and Howl's Moving Castle, and I absolutely love those, but they're in storage right now. Um, I try to find all my art books in storage so I could do this video, and I only found one of the boxes, but it had most of them in there, so... Yeah, Ghibli art books are fantastic, but I'm going to get right into it. The first is one of the independent artists, and this is a three book collection. Um, I don't know the artist's first name, but it's just the Vaughn sketchbook. And each of these is a different year of their work. I bought them as like a set. They have gold gilded edges and they even have little bookmarks. My favorite though, which I'll show you examples from, is obviously the one that is the most recent. Well, it's not now. When I bought it, it was the most recent and out of this set it is, which is 2017 and 2018. Um, but this artist I found on Instagram and they do these beautiful, highly detailed graphite um, pencil drawings that are just breathtaking. And the whole thing is just these gorgeous pencil drawings that I can't get enough of. I'm sure you can see why I love it so much. And that's what all of them are. Um, I highly recommend looking up this artist. I tried to see if anywhere in the book says their full name or their full Instagram name and I couldn't find it. I mean, this letter is signed Tim, so maybe it's Tim Vaughn. Um, but if you look up the Vaughn sketchbooks, I'm sure you'll find it online. So absolutely love these, highly recommend. I mean, I highly recommend all of these, that's the point. So I'm gonna say that a lot, I apologize. Next is the video game art, and that is the art of Cuphead. I love Cuphead, I love the art. It's so whimsical and cute. And this has all the concept art in there. So rather than just being what you see in the game, you get to see the sort of behind the scenes work they did. And I absolutely love that. Even just the backgrounds are so breathtaking. I'm sure anyone who plays this game knows that the art is just amazing. Let me know if you guys play the game, by the way. I do, but I definitely uh, get my butt handed to me <laughs> regularly in that game. I haven't actually beat it yet. I play it slowly so I don't just get enraged. I mean, I still get enraged, but yeah, I love books with concept art. And I just love the art of Cuphead so much. So I highly recommend it. It's pretty good sized. Um, and I got this on Amazon, actually, and it's fantastic. I got it a couple years ago for Christmas. Next is this cute book. Um, it got bent in storage. One of the boxes, like, collapsed when another box fell on it and, like, warped my stuff in it, so I'm working on straightening it out. But this is by Ula Thinel. I don't know how to pronounce that, but... This one is like beautiful watercolor illustrations. It was also signed. And then this is another one I found on um, Instagram. But they just do whimsical watercolor and colored pencil drawings and paintings, I should say. And I absolutely love it. Watercolor is so much more difficult to use than it looks like it would be. So doing something like this is actually really difficult to make so beautiful and refined looking. 
and it's really inspiring because I love to use watercolor and colored pencil, but mine is not so pretty. <laughs> Maybe one day. I'm new to the medium, so which is why, but yeah, I find this art book really inspiring to keep trying to do new things with watercolor and pencil. Next is the only sort of how-to, and it's not like a step-by-step how-to, it just shows examples, but this is Drawing Animals, Masters of Anatomy, Book 5 by Raul Moreno, and this sort of has three different sections. The first is um, just feral, anatomically correct animals, which I think are so beautifully done. I love the way they use line weight to show the fur and muscles and um, the stronger outer lines. I think it's really, oops, that's the next section. I think it's really well done and it just is gorgeous. I can't draw animals like at all, which is why I have this book. Um, I'm better than I used to be, but I thought I should get this book. A lot of my commissioners like anthro characters because I do character art commissions um, and I'm better at humanoid art. So, I try to learn where I can, and I've definitely been improving over the years, but this book is just, it's so nice to even just look at, even if you're not there to study it. I just love this book. The second section is where the animals have more character to their faces. Um, they're still in animal form, like they're not standing upright or wearing clothes or anything, but you can see on their faces that they're when they're standing up but um they're just more characterized Char wow that's not a word you know what I mean they're more anthropomorphized even though they're not fully in clothes working day jobs anything like that um so it's like a middle ground which I, I love the style it reminds me of Zootopia and then the last part is where they've gone all the way and they're in sort of day clothes, working jobs, and I love how silly a lot of them are. <laughs> like they didn't try to take it so seriously or make them too human. They just wanted to make it where, you know, almost like they're people in the world. And I just think it's so well done. I love how it does fur and hair. I love how they made, even when they're wearing clothes, like they still have their animal bodies to a point. Obviously when they're standing and everything they have to alter um, their body a little, but it's not too much. It's still ones where, you know, skinny legged animals have long skinny legs and ones that have shorter, thicker legs and bodies. Um, it shows still. And I just love how goofy they are. I love this possum. And yeah, I super love this book. This collection, um, because I said it's Masters of Anatomy book five, it's not all about animals. This is just the one that is about animals. They have different things, like I think they have superheroes and stuff and just humans. Um, and then just a ton of other things. And this is the only one I own, but I would like to look into the rest of their collection sometime. Next is this gorgeous book, which I super love, and it's very unique. This one's Katsuya Terada Real Size. And what this is, is this is an artist who draws massive art on like mural type walls. So this book shows the full image on a page and then the next couple pages will be the real life size, just like bits and pieces because you can't fit the entire art piece on a page if it's real size. Like this is a close up, not a close up. This is how big it was drawn. This is the real life size but the image was much bigger. Um, and I bookmarked some because I wanted to avoid, I will warn you that there's some nudity in this. It's not sexualized or anything, but I just wanted to avoid that for YouTube. Um, but here's an example. This is the full art piece they did, which is, I just can't get over this. Like there's so much detail and so many lines and it's just so breathtaking. I'm biased. I love food dogs and there's some food dogs in this, but um, that's an example of like the full image. And then this is the real life image, real life size of just this part. So this shows how large um, 
this artwork was actually drawn. Here are some more examples of their art. I just like idolize this, this uh, artist so much. And then here's the life-size version of just uh, this snippet right here. This is how large they drew it. And it's just, it's just so, what's the word? I can't even, <laughs> I can't even put to words how I feel about it. Um, it's so mesmerizing, but it's so inspiring also to keep growing as an artist and keep working on my technique and not be lazy with details and things like that. Um, they do a lot of beautiful dragons and mythical creatures. Oh, here's an example of them drawing uh, on a bigger scale. They draw bigger than this usually. Like, I mean, uh, usually like mural size wall, but um, that's an example of them drawing. And then here's the life size again. Here we go. I bookmarked this specifically so you can see they draw on just rooms, just murals. And then here's another example of their art. So yeah, I absolutely adore this. I recommend checking it out. I got this on Amazon also. I got most of these. I think I got all but two of these on Amazon. No, all but three of these. Um, but I will be putting in the description. I'm not done yet, but I figured I'd mention all of these will be in the description so you can look up um, the book and, or the artist's name for yourself. I just dropped my whole stack of books. Sorry about that noise. <laughs> Everything's fine. Um, second to last, we have the Steven Universe art books. And these are obviously from a show. So this is my last non-independent artist. I have the first one here, which is Art and Origins. And then I have End of an Era, which is the second one. And for any Steven Universe fans, you know the art's absolutely beautiful. It's so creative and whimsical and unique. But again, not just showing off the art, but these ones have so much concept design. And I love that so much. I love to see where characters started when they uh, didn't have their design fleshed out yet. I love that it has mixes of art from different, different people who worked on the show. Um, and yeah, just to see how far the character designs came and everything. It's, it's fun and helpful to see the process that wonderful professional artists do. And I just love it. I love how silly and whimsical all of it is. I love that you can see like the attached post-its where they had to like go over things they didn't like. I love, like, I didn't know that Lion originally, like, there were, like, foo dog ideas for Lion, which is really neat. Um, so yeah, both books are like this. They both are a mix of concept art and then finalized art and some backgrounds. And they're just both so great. So yeah, definitely check these out if you like Steven Universe or if you just like sort of um, creative art in general. And then last is possibly my favorite. Um, it's very thick. And... I would say my favorite artist, and that's Kim Jong Gi, and I will add that to the description also, so you know how to spell it. They have a an. Do they have an Instagram? I don't remember. They have YouTube though and Twitter, where you can see them drawing live. They draw also like that other person, like big mural scale things on walls, or you'll see them drawing live on the inside of sketchbooks for people. But what's so interesting about them? is that 
they basically have like a photographic memory and they'll draw full scenes completely from their memory with just these all of these intricate details that are just insane even if you had a reference and they do it completely by memory and it's just I have no idea how a mind can work like that. This is another one I bookmarked certain pages to show you specifically because you should know that all of this artist's books have a lot of sexually explicit scenes in them so I didn't want to show that on YouTube and if you're getting this for a gift or for a younger artist um, you should know that that they're very sexually explicit it's not just like tasteful nudes <laughs> so <laughs> I bookmarked some so that I don't accidentally show you anything like that because there is a lot of that in here but yeah they just do this is mostly their sketches and this is the 2011 sketches from them and they have all sorts of things in here they're not just like anthro which that is um they have they even have some comics here's Abe Sapien over here because they've done some work for comics and everything Here's some of the things that, like, they draw from their mind, which is so intense. Like, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I will never be to that point in my artistic career where I can do anything like this without references, or at least do them, like, accurately without references. Um, it's, it's real intense. There is drug usage also as a warning in these. Um, but their like spatial awareness in scenes is just so awesome. And yeah, this is a, like I said, very thick book. This is almost 700 pages, which is great for an art book. Sometimes they're really, I mean, this was expensive, but sometimes they're really expensive and you get like, 50 pages and <laughs> this one's almost 700 so that's real neat you there are even parts um i'm just making sure there's nothing naughty on there but um where it's like a photo of his sketchbook and it just has all his sketches directly in his sketchbook that's neat and there's oh i did have another bookmark sometimes they're just silly doodles which i actually love seeing from artists and then there will just be like highly detailed doodles on the next page. And then there are also some work on comics in here. I think I bookmarked, but there's a lot of stuff of him and his family doing things in like high detail. There's another one with great spatial awareness for rooms. And then here we go. Here's some example works of his comic works. And yeah, so that's Kim Jong Gi. And that's my final art book that I'm showing you today. I hope that was interesting to you. I hope if you like art books, you saw something you would like to get. I absolutely love and recommend all of these. I'm not just like showing you ones that ended up being disappointing, but I own them, so I might as well show you. Like these are all ones that I absolutely love. And I will show you in the future when I build on my collection, which I definitely plan on doing. And that's all for today. I will see you again soon. Bye.